Have you ever wanted your own TV show? Have you dreamed of showcasing your talent for the world to see? Well, now you can. Have your own TV show. You can have your own 30-minute show. Not only will you be seen in the Detroit area, but you can be viewed worldwide. Be seen on WHPR Detroit Live, Comcast Cable Channel 91, on the web at tv33whpr.com, with the TV33 app, on Roku, Google TV, Apple TV, and on Amazon Fire TV. Act now. Time slots are limited. Sign up today and get a free replay with the purchase of your time slot. For more information, call 313-868-6612. Visit our studios and receive a free TV interview to promote your business, church, or organization by appointment only. Good afternoon, Growing and Grace audience. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about um, something from a child's perspective, and uh, it mainly involves listening. Yes, a lot of times our children have things on our mind, and they want to talk to us about it, but sometimes we're cooking. We're too busy, we're on the phone, we're multitasking, and a lot of things our child tells us go unheard. So I just want to invite you to pay close attention uh, to your children and listen, and perhaps you will learn. So the name of the topic is So Much to Say. That's the topic. So much to say. And it derives from um, a speech engagement I gave some time ago at a graduation. And I hopefully you will get something out of it. But before I go into the topic, I always like to go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, I want to thank you for waking us up, uh, setting us in our mind, right mind, clothing us with food, shelter, and a place to stay. Lord, I ask that you bless the nursing homes for the uh, patients that's in there. I ask that you be with them, Lord. I ask that you touch the world right now, Lord. They experience COVID-19 and people are dying every day. Lord, I ask that you stop this dreaded disease or virus and heal your people. Touch, heal, and deliver all over the land. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Thank you. Now, as I say, the name of the program is Listening Because the Children of the World Have So Much to Say. Have you ever wondered what was on your child's mind? What was on your children's mind? Why some of them commit suicide? This is a perplexed situation. And we experience it all over the world. Suicide is on a rampage. But sometimes there are signs. There are clues. There's revelation if you only listen. I say this is about children, but it can be about adults too. They are crying out, and 
a lot of times they are saying, Mama, 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 I have so much to say, but the world is not listening. They're turning me away. Yes, they're turning our children away. They're being turned away in school, at home, through peer pressure, just to name a few situations. They turned them away. And this is an everyday thing. Every day some child is getting picked on. Is it your child? Some of them are getting picked on. Some of them can't tell. They can't tell their peers or their parents when they're getting picked on. Perhaps the father will say, man up. Or the mother will say, uh, don't, don't fight. But what do you do when your kids are being bullied? Call names. Being belittled. They come in to tell us, and some of us don't pay attention. We don't do nothing about it. And when I say nothing about it, I'm not telling you to go up to the school and uh, jump on your kid, um, friend, or bully, whoever picked them, picked them on, but have an intercession meeting with the principal, the parents, or whoever. Because our children need us. I don't want to say, but I can recall some time ago that my children were in school. And one of their cousins uh, was in Head Start with one of my children, one of my kids. The teacher uh, said something to one of my uh, son's uh, cousin, and she said, I don't, I don't quite remember the whole conversation, but I think she told the little girl to tell her mother to calm her hair before she sent her to school, or she uh, said something um, closer to, why you got mixed match socks? Can't your parents uh, get you some new socks or something? But needless to say, uh, the child felt a shame. She went home and told her mother. The mother came to the school and it was a big argument. Uh, someone had to intervene and get between the mother and the teacher because it was almost a situation that uh, was going to cause a fight. And I don't advocate this to no one. But our children need our help. They need us to watch over them, pray over them, and stand by them. And I'm not saying stand by them when they are wrong. But they need us. And maybe this was the wrong approach for the parent to go and uh, be combated with the teacher. Maybe they could have resolved it in a meeting or whatever was the situation. But enough of that. The call goes out loud and clear. Mama, 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 I have so much to say, but the world is not listening. They turning me away. They turning us away. 
And when I say us, I'm talking about our children. When your daughter hurt, this could be any one of our daughters. Someone spiked her drink. She calls home from the hospital. But no one isn't there. No one isn't there. Your daughter has something to say. Well, nobody didn't answer the phone or know that she's in the hospital. A son wouldn't stand up to his father. And this is many, many of us when we grow up. We wouldn't stand up to our father. He wanted to please him so bad. And how much of us have that uh, way that we want to please our parents. And that's only honorable. He wanted to please his father so bad. So he joined the army. His father was a soldier. So after the son enlisted, he had basic training. When basic training was finished, he died in a helicopter crash. Had he died in the sun, died in the helicopter crash. Had only he spoke up. Had only he spoke up and let his father know he wanted to go a, a different way. So the son should have said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. I had so much to say. But he didn't speak up. The son didn't speak up. And the world was not listening. Just like in some instances, it's not listening to the, today. Have you ever wondered why so many people are on pills today? Going to psychologists. Something is wrong. Adults are going to marriage counselors. Because it's about communication. A spouse might not be listening or they might be having a conflict. So some of us try yoga. We read the astrologies. We looking for calm or peace, peace, or peace. We tried TM, transcendental meditation. We want to know our future, so we have someone to read our palms. But have you ever tried to pray? Have you ever tried God? He's always there, although you might not see him. But prayer, and prayer is the key, and faith unlocks the door. Yes, it is. Now I'm back to the topic. The son died in a helicopter crash. Uh, the father was probably remorse. Now, I made this up. But so many of us tried to please our parents. Our father might have played football. Did very good in high school. Excelled in college, in sports. But he got injured and couldn't play pro. So a lot of us fathers 
live our lives through our kids. We want them to be a great boxer. We want them to be a professional football player, basketball, uh, some other sports. I have a young son at home, a couple of them. Uh, Dominic and Jalen. One likes games to play with, video games. The other is good in track and in basketball. But while he was in high school, he was doing three sports. Finally, he injured himself one time and got off the, the sports team. Now, he can excel in basketball. He won all types of trophies in elementary, uh, in junior high. I mean, yeah, in junior high. One uh, coach wanted him to play uh, in the league at State Fair. And he was in pals. He tried for a while. And he burnt himself out. So I don't push him to play basketball anymore. But whatever he wants to do, I will encourage him. Maybe he'll pick up the ball again or run track or football. A few coaches was seeking him to play for their team and their school. But right now, we got him concentrating on his lesson and his grades. If he so desire, sports will come later. But one thing I do, I listen to my child. I pray over my children every night. And I try to find out what are they doing and what are they interested in. And I'm not boasting. But we all should pay attention to what our children think. And what they do. Children all over across America are crying for help. They're crying for help. But how many of us pay attention? And again, they saying, Mama, 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 I have so much to say, but the world is not listening. They're turning me away. George Floyd cried out for his mama when he was taking his breath. It ain't nothing to be a mama's boy. A lot of us are closer to our mama than our father because some of us are raised by one parent home. So a lot of times the mother is there, you know, to nurture us and take care of us. And the father is MIA. I don't fault the father because I don't know the situation. But our children are crying for help. A baby is born. And I'm giving you some for instance. A baby is born and, gain, and, and is given up for adoption. He becomes to the age of 16 and he looks for his natural parents. And this is what a lot of people do. They look for their natural parents. And also, he carries a lot of baggage, such as failure and abuse. 
failure and abuse. But he vows to pray. Why me? Why me? Could this be your child? Could this be your daughter? Or another family member? Now I use this illustration, an adopted uh, child. It could be one of your natural kids. It don't have to be adopted. Because the, one of the reasons I use this illustration, because um, 2001 to 2007, we did foster care. We had close to 40 kids in our home between those seven years. We didn't have them all at once, but sometimes we had five kids. Others we had six. Sometimes we kept kids overnight uh, for a couple of days through emergency situations. But the last time we had kids, which we got in 2006, I believe, our license was only good for six kids. Uh, out of the uh, close to 40 some kids we had, I say maybe 15 of them went back to their uh, natural home envi environment. The other was put back into the system. Now, when you get foster kids, a lot of times mothers and fathers or husbands and wives or spouse or significant other, they only uh, want the children up to two years old to adopt. Now, when it comes to teenagers, a lot of people don't uh, want teenagers. Reason is, they have different personalities. They have baggage. Uh, some of them still or been through a whole lot. And when a person is if a couple or whoever wants to adopt a kid, uh, the state does an extensive background on you. And sometimes it's hard to get children. So a lot of them stay into the system until they uh, become 18. But I thank God that me and my wife had the patience along with my daughter, uh, Shana and Chico, to help, you know, raise the kids because it truly takes a village to raise a child. When we had to listen and love these kids as they was our very own, which they were. But the last bunch of kids we got was five brothers and we adopted them in 2009. We had them um, from since 2006. And the reason why we adopted them because the two of them was younger. The other was like uh, six through eight. And we wanted the family to stay together. Had they went into the, back into the system, uh, they they would have been separated. So I, I said this for people that's lonely and want to adopt, give it a try. Okay, moving on. A young man was targeted by racism. And this is going on today. He was targeted by racism at a mostly white school in the suburbs. His classmates will call him monkey, the N-word, or jigaboo. They will vandalize his locker, steal his clothes while he's swimming. He wanted to leave, but his parents would tell him to stick it out. 
but they turned him away. The parents are turning him away by telling him to stick it out. Now, it's all right to stay somewhere and fight your own battles if you got help. But sometimes it's different when we're not in that person's shoes. And when I say fight your own battle, I'm not always talking about this, using your knuckles. I'm talking about using your brain. But most of all, you should have a good support group. Parents, again I say, mama, 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 I have so much to say, but the world is not listening. They turning me away. Do not turn your child away. Jesus tells us, suffer the little children to come unto me. The Bible tells us, That, in Proverbs, let me see if I can uh, get the correct uh, scripture. Um, uh, Proverbs, what is it, 3 and 5? Well, I, I'll come back to that another time. But I believe it says, train up a child in the way he should go. And once he's old, he should not depart from that. So, as I get ready to summarize this uh, lesson, what are your kids thinking about? Have you sat down to listen to them? Do you help them with their homework? Are you paying attention? We see our kids every day in the news. People are following them home calling them names. Police are shooting them. They're in certain neighborhoods where people don't think they should be. And they're getting, bru uh, uh, they're getting a bruise. We can look at history through Emmett Till, a young teenager or a young black man, however you want to call him. He was killed and threw in the lake. And he died. Because someone falsely accused him. We should learn from our lessons throughout history that it takes the village to raise a child and we need our own children. I can recall when I was coming up, the newsman would say, it's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Fast forward to now. Time is winding down. Do you know where your children are? Every day, we hear about children are missing, kidnapped. Sold through sex slave. So we need to know where our children is. We need to help them. We need to pay attention. As they cry out, Mama, 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 I have so much to say. The world is not listening. They turning us away. Lord, have mercy if we neglect our children. Because sometimes the world do not think about them, but we should. Through thick and thin, no matter what's the cost. Love your children. Don't let them get lost. Don't let them get caught up in gangs or sex trafficking because you are too busy to pay attention. I can recall a prominent minister one time. He had a son, but I'll conclude this some other time. Thank you, and God bless you. Until next time, you've been watching Growing in Grace. See you soon.